A tepid close to a lackluster week in Dalal Street. The Sensex and Nifty ended with minor losses on Friday but posted marginal gains for the week. The mid-cap index ended higher for the fourth straight week. Hello and welcome to Editor's Roundtable. We saw an IPO frenzy this week. More on that coming up. We also do a deep dive into the Tata Group companies which hit two important milestones this week. We'll also take a look at the government's progress in divestment so far and what we can expect going forward. I am Reema Tinduka, with me Prashant, Nimesh and Nigel. And we also have Mihir Vora, Chief Investment Officer at Trust Mutual Fund. Boys, men? <laughs> <laughs> You, no, uh, you, you uh, look, uh, that side and said boy, you look this side and said men. What's the... <laughs> well, I'm not saying. <laughs> Was it deliberate or...? <laughs> Just deliberate. <laughs> I wanted to say gentlemen and then boys and men came out. <laughs> well, you know, the action in the market, uh, it became slower and slower, right? Uh, towards the end of the week. Thursday, I think, what, three points or so in the Nifty? And Friday, I one. didn't see the final averaged out close, but it was one, two point or yeah. so. So nothing. Absolutely nothing and I think it's all thanks to the fact that US markets were shut on Thursday. Yep. Today they'll be ending early and the Indian markets have a holiday on Friday. Yes. I mean next on Monday. Monday. So next Monday. Thank you for us. Volumes as well for institutional participation was lower in this week and in fact I think the only action was stock specific. Otherwise on the headline index, yep. institutional activity I think was 15% lower than what we have seen in the other weeks as well. So good times. You know but the good part is directionally at least markets were higher. The Nifty and the Midcap Index, uh, you know, ended higher for the week. The Nifty was up about 0.3 percent. The Midcap Index was higher by about half a percent. So the momentum was lacking. We didn't see big moves, but at least the markets continue to climb higher and higher, a little bit. But at least it did directionally. Uh, I mean, so far uh, it has been it's yeah. been up, right? It's not been down. October exactly. we had a bit of a down, but we are up uh, from that those levels quite a bit. So what I've uh, what I do is just set a, set it up with two parts. One is global, and the other is local. Uh, I'll start with global. Globally, things are looking very sanguine, very nice, right? Because this is the end of the year. Seasonally, it's a strong time for markets. Uh, I think 80% of the time, going back 20, 25 years, markets generally trend up. I mean, 3 4%, but they're up, they're not down. So you've got that kind of tailwind coming through. Uh, I think globally, uh, and this happened right after the last F Fed meeting, uh, the theme, the narrative has completely shifted. You know, even two uh, sort of, uh, or a month back, markets were still talking about the next hike, higher for longer, <laughs> all of that. Nobody's talking about any of that. People are not talking about how much Fed will cut in 2024 and the fact that the big global hiking cycle is now behind. And I think that is what uh, the expectation is, that, uh, you know, that will help equity markets globally. Yields have settled at a lower, a lower more narrower kind of tighter range. Uh, so, I mean, no real big problem. The next big shift, I mean, if you read what a lot of people are writing and talking about, whenever when that happens, the next big shift in narrative will happen when data in the U.S. starts to weaken materially. Because right now, you know, it's all goody good. Uh, it's soft landing, no hard landing, no recession. But at some point, uh, we don't know when, uh, data in the U.S. will start to weaken and then the narrative will flip again. It'll be an environment which will be good for bonds, bad for stocks, but that's not right now. Locally here, uh, you know, again, nothing to really complain about. Earnings season is behind us. But the market is also, as you said, Reema, uh, lost momentum a little bit. And Bank Nifty has been the real problem uh, for some time now. So without Bank Nifty participating, uh, you know, I don't know if the Nifty can uh, participate. The next big trigger, which may actually get us out of this very ranged activity, is elections. So same time next week, Friday, we'll be talking about the election verdict on uh, Sunday. Sunday. That's the 3rd of uh, December. Five states went, went to elections. I think not just the number in terms of whether it is 3 1, 4 1, 3 2, whatever, but the quantum mm. of the win or the loss will also make a lot of difference, even in, especially actually in Hindi heartland states like Madhya Pradesh. So I think uh, that'll be the next big event. Anyway, Monday is a holiday, so it's four days of trade and then, of course, waiting for that big uh, election outcome. You know, so Jeffries, in their note today, said uh -huh. their initial feedback on the ground is that maybe the BJP will fare better than what the market is expecting. Yes. Uh, and if that takes place, maybe the markets could see a pop or a bit of a bounce after 3rd of December. Yeah. And in fact, that's the reason why they added, right? They have added back the cash levels, what they raised. Yes. And now they're quite confident about, uh, you know, the global markets turning positive. India macros have been good. And if state election comes out to be better, I think there could be a bit of gush of liquidity as well from the global FI. So I think that's something which only we'll get to know next week when the, when the election outcome comes. But, you know, I was just looking at from a, from a dealing room perspective and from the market perspective, 
at the index level, we may look very flat, but the fact that there was so much of uh, you know interest in the broader markets, one barometer for me is I didn't struggle for deal sheet charter. That <laughs> shows that there was a lot of buzz and a lot of stocks to talk about. So a lot of action in the broader markets. Look at today, you know what happened to the uh, the, the the insurance PSU companies, right? All were hit, like 18, 20 percent up, low volume stocks, but at least. Uh, low float stock, but there, were, there was a lot of interest as well. So that momentum continues, and and it looks like you know the the leadership mental is clearly with the PSUs. Every week we'll talk about either a oil PSU or a bank PSU or a insurance PSU doing good. So that momentum is likely to continue. Is, is the overall feedback? I think the other trend was this week the focus and money clearly shifted to the primary market. Five large IPOs, everyone got subscribed 50, 60, 70 times. So clearly the focus was 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 from the retail investors as well was largely towards the IPOs. I'll talk about the IPO over, overall as well for 23. Vashant, you rightly spoke about the election outcomes and that will be a big trigger to watch out for. Nobody knows right now as to how they'll pan out, but from a trigger, again, you know, that's that's one big trigger, but the other interesting trend is the uh, the, seller, the supply from the large institutions, the private equity investors, the strategic <coughs> investors have started and, and that is likely to continue. We spoke about uh, Paytm, large block one executed today. So, Looks like there are more in the pipeline. I, I guess, uh, you know, Mir is going to participate in some of them, but we'll ask him about that. But broadly, that's been the trend that, you know, that, that <coughs> momentum has again started. So supply of paper is there, IPOs are, are buzzing, and there is a lot of interest in the broader market. Actually, uh, Mir Vora is with us. Mir, you know, somebody jokingly was telling me earlier that if, some, if you ask 1,000 companies, 500 companies, whatever, would you like to do a QIP right now? And uh, the person I was talking to was saying, was saying that 90% would say yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that, why, why is that correct? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Why yeah. not? We're getting money, Absolutely. why not? Absolutely. Uh, how are markets looking otherwise, Meir, according to you? Uh, see, I think uh, there is intense uh, retail uh, participation. Yeah. Uh, I think even the SEBI chairperson did mention something about, you know, a lot of speculation in, in on the retail side. Uh, so, I don't think the kind of stocks that are moving, especially in the last, say, uh, one month or so, mm -hmm. are usually institutional stocks. So, you're seeing a lot of action in a lot of stocks. But now I think we are going down the market cap curve and it's more in the hand of retail, I would say, than institutions. And lower the market cap curve is the, where the excitement is, right? <laughs> yeah. But does that I mean, worry you? It's more like instant gratification. <laughs> but does that worry you? It does. It does show that there's more froth building up in the small cap, the micro cap. So maybe time to be cautious. You know, we'll come back to that space in just a bit. But from micro and small caps, let's talk about large caps. Right? Let's <laughs> talk about, and uh, it doesn't get much bigger than the, than the Tata's. And it was a pretty important week, uh, Reema. Tata Te Technologies, the second tech company listed. Yeah. Uh, not listed, but the IPO closed and uh, very strong subscription numbers. And uh, Titan, uh, 3 lakh crores of market cap. Absolutely. So here I'm going to talk about the Tata Group companies because as Prashant said, there were two key milestones hit by the Tata Group this week itself. So first, just an overview. There are about 17 large Tata Group companies. Here I'm not talking about the TTML, which is also listed, but I'm talking about the bigger companies, the TCSs, Tata Steel, Tata Motors, Titan. And together, these 17 companies have a market capitalization of 25 lakh crore rupees. Now, the two big milestones that I spoke about, one is the Tata Tata Tech IPO opened this week and what frenzy, what demand. In fact, it got fully subscribed in less than two hours of opening. This is the first IPO from the Tata Group in close to about two decades. Its market capitalization will be about 20,000 crore rupees. And what makes it very exciting is the valuation. It's being offered at a valuation of 32 times trailing PE, FI 23 PE, which is at a discount to you know listed peers, like say even a Tata LXE or a KPIT technology or a l &T technology. Also, another factor which has led to such high demand is it's a small issue, just about 3,042 crore rupees. And now everyone's talking about a bumper listing for Tata technology. But the second important milestone is Titan. Uh, now, well, most of the you know Tata Group companies have done well over the last 10 years, two decades, but look at the journey of Titan. Uh, in 2003, exactly 20 years back, the share price was about 5 rupees, went to 44 rupees, and this week it hit a lifetime high of 3,400 rupees per share, crossing the market capitalization level of 3 lakh crore rupees. In fact, over a 20-year period, 
Titan has been the best performing Tata Group stock. Look at the CAGR returns of Titan versus the other uh, you know, pairs. Titan has given you a 38% CAGR over a 20-year period, beating a Tata LXC, which is at 30%, uh, and Trend, which is at 27%. But that's over a 20-year period. If you, you know, zoom in a little bit and look at it from a 5 or a 10-year period, the best performing Tata Group stocks have been Tata LXC and the other one has been trend so both these two have given solid returns over the last five and ten years but the one which is you know shine the brightest um, you know been glistening has been uh, Titan we wanted to get your thoughts on both these two one Tata Tech now even if you subscribe um, you're not going to get too much by way of allocation given how strong the subscription is would you recommend buying at opening and what according to you would be an attractive level enough to enter what if it opens a thousand rupees double of the <laughs> issue price then would you recommend subscribing well i wish i had bought uh, but uh, since i can't comment on stocks <laughs> you know uh, but the, the thing is that uh, uh, there is ample you know appetite out there for new ideas and ipos are a good way of you know participating in a new uh, you know, idea or so, and we saw in the last couple of uh, uh, cases <coughs> where there was a little bit of excitement, a little bit of upside surprise, and the stocks have moved a lot. Mm. Uh, so, to that extent, I think what is happening in the IPOs is that the free float is not that high, yeah. and if if in the first few days we see a lot of institutional participation, then the free float gets even more constrained, as the retailers would have gotten out, and that creates the extra bit of yeah. uh, you know valuation upside, I guess. Mm. You know, guys, I'll tell you a story. My uh, my son is ten. And uh, last week, uh, last week actually, uh, he came to me and he said, uh, Papa, do you know what is trend at? I, I, the backstory to this is, uh, about a year ago, I told, I, mean, I said, you know, since we do stocks all the time, markets all the time, these guys, uh, kids should learn through osmosis. They should pick up something, right, at the margin. I said, you know, why don't you guys research stocks, start reading the newspapers, etc. And a year ago, I told, I mean, you know, I just asked them, what do, they, what do you like? He came back to me within half an hour of that question saying, Trent. Wow. And I asked him, I remember, so this conversation came back uh, last week uh, or something. And I remember back then, I said, well, how do you pick it? So he, op he had basically opened some website. And, you know, there was a list of stocks and Trent was the number one. I, mean, I don't think he knew <laughs> what he was talking about. I think it was maybe, I, I don't know what it was. And uh, he said, well, look at... Uh, <laughs> but it also shows you the kind of market we're in, right? I, mean, I can hire uh, your son. Sorry? I can hire you. <laughs> You're looking for people, right? Yeah. I'll send over the resume. He's 10, a little younger, but uh, I mean, I think can be uh, groomed. Well, you know, let's uh, talk about uh, more IPOs, right? It's been the week of IPOs. I think four IPOs, by the way, closed today, including Tata Tech uh, uh, and a few others as well. Uh, but Nimish is going back and looking at this data uh, to add some more perspective on, in terms of what the year has been like. Nimish. 2023 turned out to be a good year as far as the IPOs are concerned. And this week was special as well with five big IPOs getting launched uh, this week itself. So let's look at the list of the IPOs of this week. EDA, which got closed on Thursday, got massively subscribed. Uh, the subscription was nearly 40 times. Uh, the, the four other IPOs got, got closed on Friday. Tata Technologies got subscribed nearly 70 times. Gandhar Oil got subscribed nearly 64 times. Fed Fina got subscribed nearly two times. And Fair Writings also got subscribed nearly 47 times. So big subscription to all the issues of this week. Now, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, the momentum is likely to continue in the month of December as well, is what I understand from bankers. Seven to eight IPOs are lined up and they're going to raise between eight to 10,000 crores. Some prominent names that I understand from bankers which are going to hit the market. EPAC is one name. Uh, the other name is uh, the Park Hotels, Dooms, as well as Jena, Finance, Jena Small Finance Bank. These are a few IPOs which are likely to hit the market in the month of December. But Overall, you know, the year 23, calendar year 23, was isn't quite strong. 46 companies got listed uh, on the exchanges and cumulatively they've raised nearly 41,000 crores from the IPO. Of course, most of them was through the OFS, but there were some big gainers as well within the IPO list in 2023. The biggest gainer in that list is Cyan DLM. That, uh, that stock is up nearly 142% uh, from the issue price. The other, other big gainer is Senko Gold, rallying close to 130%. EMS has rallied nearly 126%. And so is the case with Vishnu Chemicals, up 114%. And Plaza Wire is also doubled from the issue price. And these are the big gainers as well. But there were some losers as well in 2023. The biggest loser is Uptair, Uptair Services. That's down 10 odd percent. Yatra Online, even that was down nearly 10 percent from the issue price. And IRM Energy is the other one, which is down 7.5 percent from the issue price. But there were some big, uh, you know, subscriptions as well in this year in terms of IPOs. The biggest subscription came in Plaza Wire. That issue got subscribed nearly 114x 
and, and the other big one was is up uh, small financial services that got subscribed nearly 77 times aeroflex index is a small issue but the, even that was subscribed nearly 70 times ratnavir uh, precision wire engineering that got subscribed nearly 65 times and new web tech that also got issued nearly subscribed 63 times so of course Tata Technologies is the, uh, is, is the now get, going to get added to the list of big subscriptions, but calendar year 23 uh, turned out to be a good year as far as the IPOs are concerned, and it looks like the momentum is continue in the month of December as well. Mir, uh, any thoughts on any of these names, what Nimesh presented? I mean, you don't want to talk about names, but uh, yeah, yeah, the, tr the trend's been strong. The trend's been strong, but the numbers are still not very large, frankly. You know, if you, if you look at the 90s and the 2000s, as a percentage of market cap, the quantum of IPOs is, is still too small. So I don't think we should be worried too much about supply, frankly speaking. Mm. Over a period of time, I mean, just mm. a ballpark guess, right? Uh, say if 100 IPOs, have come, how many have come to Mish in, uh, in the last one year? In to this year, calendar year, this is, uh, today we are ending with 47 IPOs. So, so we'll, we'll of course cross 50 for sure by the month, by the end of December. So say 50 IPOs, uh, so five years out, how many, uh, ballpark, I mean, how many would be above, in the green, how many would be below water, how many would be around, any, any guesses? I mean, you've seen this cycle play out. I mean, uh, yes. in, in bull the, markets, the, the rush is there. It's not as high as the 90s. Yes. But still, five years out, I mean, any, any guesses? My guess is the strike rate would be higher than in the past. Okay. Uh, because this time around, it's not in one particular sector or group of stocks. Yeah. You know, if you look at the 2007, 8, 9 frenzy, it was mostly infra, power, mm -hmm. those kind of names. Uh, in, in some of the construction, etc. But this time around, it's across sectors. So I don't see a sectoral mini bubble building up so far. Mm. Correct. Abhir, <coughs> hold that thought. We need to slip into a very short break. On the other side, we'll do a deep dive into the government's progress on divestment so far. What can we expect going forward? We'll tell you after this short break.